Hello and welcome Emmaus Road Online. My name's Josh, this is Em, and we are the pastors of Emmaus Road Woking. These are our sons, this is Jackson, and this is Jonas. And we just wanted to say hi and welcome. Welcome if you're watching live, but also welcome if you're watching on demand later. So this is church from our dining room. We are so pleased we could squeeze you all in. I'm very happy that I'm not making you all a cup of tea, but this is proof that church is about wherever we are this morning. We have got jets and microlights going on all in the same place, and I'm sure many of you do too. So we are one family in many homes. We've got homes all over Surrey. We just want to say a massive welcome to Guildford Congregation, if you're here and you represent that, then welcome. If you're Woking, massive welcome to you. And if you're Aldershot, a big welcome to you as well. We're also aware that this many homes is growing to all over the world. We had people logging on last week from all over the, um, all over the nations of the world. And this week we've got people coming in from Fortaventura. Jill, hello, welcome, thanks for being with us. We've got people here from Farnham which is great as well. Thanks, Farnham, for jumping in. But yeah, the reason we know where people are uh, is because we've got Slido running today. And Slido is a way for you on your browsers. You can just share any questions you've got. You can also share if you feel like um, God's giving you a word that you just want to share this morning to encourage us and to bless us. And we'll try and get that read out here as we, um, as we do the service, as we worship, as we hear from Pete and Sammy later. Um, so yeah. Massive welcome, thanks for being with us. We are so pleased that we get to have this shared experience together as church um, and aware that we are in very different situations. We've had some lovely messages this week from people in all sorts of different places, from a CEO who's bored at home and desperate for the church service to go on a bit longer, from single moms at home with screaming kids, from um, a retired couple who um, got to do communion together in their home for the first time this week and found that really moving. And also from our um, NHS and frontline workers who, um, firstly, thank you mm. and we love you and support yeah. you through this time for loving at so much cost. Um, and um, yeah, we're just aware that so many of us are in so many different situations, but thank you, we're still family, we're still church, so welcome. Yeah, now for those of you who are part of the Emmaus Road like, database, you would have got an email just saying that um, when we do these services online, that we want to do something all together, that we want to do something here, but that we are this one family many homes, that in all the homes that are watching, that we all engage with the same moment. And this moment is we're going to light a candle together. And this moment is a prophetic act, it's a significant act, it's a way of us just engaging with what we're doing. The main thing is still the main thing. Like I said last week, the message is sacred but the method isn't. And so we're doing it in different ways, the method is changing. And so what we're going to do is we are going to light a candle together and we're going to say a prayer and the prayer will come up on the screen. So I'm going to get your candle ready, Jackson's going to hold my candle and I'm going to light it and then we're going to pray all together. Well, that hurt. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, as we light these candles for our time together, as a church family, may the light of your Holy Spirit fill our hearts and our homes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now we're going to have our first song of worship. So why don't we engage with that together as family?
convinced that in this season it is going to be worship that will sustain us and so I just want to say thanks so much Pete for doing that. Um, it's obviously very cloudy and dark over in Guildford at the moment. <laughs> it's obviously a joke we know it was pre-recorded. Uh, thanks Pete for doing that and obviously aware that he timed getting his hair cut at just the right moment before we all got into this lockdown so our hair's looking great <laughs> looking Pete. Good. You're awesome. Um, so yeah just like we're saying, Slido is running this morning. If you feel like you've got any words from the Lord, then please do share them. And actually this morning, as I was getting ready for today, I felt like God just spoke to me and he said that there's some people watching today that um, what you need to hear is a word from the Lord that you are going to have new ideas. Just feel like God's wanting to release just creativity over us in this season. For anyone here who, you know, you're wondering how your business is going to run at this time, I just feel like God's wanting to say to you, don't worry, you will have new ideas, you can have creative ideas, that being creative is an expression of God's nature just becoming alive in who you are. So we just release that, if that's you, just mm -hmm. take it, receive it, enjoy creativity just flowing through your mind and your heart, you have new ideas in this season. Mm. 
Nice one. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, now, we are uh, aware that many of us might have a bit more time on our hands and are needing to find creative ways to um, entertain ourselves. And so we would love you to send us in videos of what you are doing at home to create fun. Um, one of our main values is play, and that can feel a bit tricky at a time like this. And so we would love to share how we are having fun in our homes. So we are about to watch a video that was sent in by the Yegnazar family. Hello, Yegnazars. Thank you for that. Um, and later on Slido, there will be a, an email address that you can send it over to. Um, but right now, we're going to watch the Yegnazars. So we are the Yegnazars. Hi! And it is day nine of isolation for us. And we thought we'd share a few ways we are trying to keep ourselves entertained. We like to be creative together and paint. We like to pick some names out of this jar and call our friends and family and just give them some encouragement and say hi to them. We like to play the most epic game of sardines. Um, every afternoon one of us takes a turn to cook lunch and then we all sit down in the garden and eat together. And to feed ourselves spiritually, at dinner time we've been reading through the Psalms, but we decided to start at 150 and go backwards and um, everybody shares something that they took from it about God's character, which was really fun. Bye! Thank you, Yegnazars. That was awesome. And we look forward to hearing from many of you this week. We've also got the kids team are doing a Facebook dance off challenge. So if you get um, tagged in that, then we would love to see those too. You should be seeing on the screens now um, the info for our kids and youth work. Young people hop onto Instagram Live now and the team will be there to host you through this next session. Kids, the link is uh, on the screen in front of you and Mike is just putting on Slido for us as well. What I would suggest you do is don't put it on just yet. Join us in worship and then um, put it on just as Pete and Sammy start to talk because it will take you right through about the right length of time for that. So, um, yeah, over to you. So why don't we just take a moment and pray as we, uh, as we start to worship again. Yeah, God, we thank you that you are the main thing. And right now, wherever we are, whatever life looks like right now, we just choose to turn our affections towards you. We set you as our number one. God, we thank you for that. And we worship you now in Jesus' name. Amen. With your heart and lead 
of every soul we could ever see Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring He's worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you Oh Jesus, Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save He is worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh we live for you You are holy Holy There is no I will build my life upon your love It is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken It is an amazing promise in Scripture that God will inhabit the praises of his people. And it's amazing that as we worship in our own homes that God is with all of us. And as we worship in this season, we are turning our affections and we are glorifying a God that is full of hope. And right now that is the message that the whole world needs, a message of hope. And we are one family in many homes and we've got people starting to log on from all over the planet. We've got people from Australia. Good day. We've got people from New Zealand. Can't do that accent. Um, we've got Germany and Finland and uh, we've also got people from sunny Southampton where we used to live. So hello. Um, but yeah, we just want to welcome uh, everyone, anyone who is a guest uh, to this gathering. Um, and if you aren't part of our Emmaus Road database, we're aware in the season that we're growing and we're growing bigger than Surrey and um, but we want to stay connected to you. There's so much that we're doing as a church that you can actually engage with uh, in this 
new season we're at because it's all online you can engage what we're doing and so you just want to recommend uh, that you join the database while you're on the browser go to get connected and log on and put your info on there and then you can hear about everything that we're doing so yeah amen that's awesome um we are now going to go over to a um to pete and sammy's house uh, they team lead Emmaus Road, so get your notepads ready because they've got a message that is going to encourage and inspire and challenge you. So over to Pete and Sammy. Hi everyone hey. and welcome to our home. Our kitchen in fact. <laughs> our kitchen. Why don't we pray together as we start. Lord, thank you that you stay the same yesterday, today and forever. And we choose today to put our trust in you. Because no matter what happens all around us, even if everything's shaken, we know that you are our firm foundation. And we put our trust in you. Amen. Amen. It's great to be connecting again from our home to yours, spread out across hundreds of locations and thousands of miles. Yeah, we, had, we had lots of countries last, we really last week. It's amazing. We did. But we know that we're one in Jesus. And I don't know about you, but with so much uncertainty in the world right now, I need the word of God more than ever. And that's what we're going to explore together now. So, Pete, over to you. Yeah, you know, there's a, a, a Bible verse that's been kind of going round and round my mind all week, uh, which I, I'd love just to unpack a little bit with you uh, for a few minutes now. And the, the context is this. Uh, in the year 587 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sure you know, darling, <laughs> in, invaded sure. uh, Judah and uh, destroyed Jerusalem, left the temple in ruins. They took the Ark of the Covenant away, never found it again, hence Indiana Jones and all of that. And tragically, they took the people of Israel as slaves on a forced 2,000 mile walk east to Babylon. Uh, where they had to live in exile. So that's the context of this Bible reading, which is Psalm 137, verses 1 to 4. Let's read it, shall we? By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars, we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? I love that line. How can we sing the songs of the Lord in strange land? That's what the King James Version says. Suddenly we find ourselves in a very strange land, don't we, with new challenges, uh, with new questions, new opportunities, new fears, new temptations. And I think we're all trying to work out how do we sing the Lord's song in this new terrain. The new normal was very strange indeed for the people of God yeah. finding themselves in Babylon. Um, it was the largest city in the world at the time. And it had a, this large plain with um, canals that crisscrossed it. So that looked very strange to the people of Israel who are used to the rocky terrain, the valleys and the hills of mm -hmm. Judah. And it wasn't just it looked strange. Uh, they were being forced to make music for their captors. And interestingly, um, archaeologists have dug up um, a, an alabaster relief from King Sennacherib uh, in neighbouring Assyria that shows this. We're going to put this on the screens now. Oh, yeah. It shows uh, prisoners being led uh, and their captor is making those prisoners play the harp. Yeah. And so this, this is one of those other moments where you realise archaeology really backs up the Bible. And that's what's happening to the people of Israel right now. They're being forced to make music for their captors in a strange land. Mm. And so they're saying, how on earth are we going to sing the song of the Lord in this strange place of canals where the lyrics no longer ring true? I don't think this was just an emotional objection for the Israelites. I don't feel like singing worship songs anymore. I think it was actually a theological one as well because their, their, their songs didn't seem to makes sense anymore in this new space. The Psalms we know exalt God as the Lord of other nations. That's Psalm 9. Well, that didn't seem very real right, right then. 
They celebrate in the Psalms uh, being freed from captivity in the Exodus. That's Psalm 78. And here they are back in captivity. Mm. They rejoice in being a chosen people. That's Psalm 105. That's not really happening. And they sing about ascending the hill of the Lord to the temple to worship. That's Psalm 120. They don't have a temple wow. anymore. Yeah. So none of these songs ring true yeah. for the Israelites in this new landscape. They've lost the temple and they're saying, how now do we worship? For us in Emmaus, we've always said that church isn't the building. It's not the Sunday service. It's not, you know, a particular day of the week. And in a way, I suppose you could say we've lost our temple. Mm. We always said that church is about homes and families and an encounter with God 24-7. We always said that all of us are leaders. All of us can practice the sacraments. Each of us is called to kind of build an altar of discipleship and worship uh, within our own homes. Mm. And I guess we're learning how to do that in this new season, how to worship and witness in these new ways. But it's taking some new skills. Mm. I love that. Um, I don't know if you've seen online, honey, that text message where um, someone's received a message from an unknown number saying, yeah. I'm here for you. Okay. And they say, um, that's so kind of you, you know, thank you so much, it means a lot. And uh, then they say, who is it? And the reply comes, it's your Uber driver, I'm waiting outside. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, wow. Sometimes caring for people yeah. can be difficult in this season, can't it? This week I saw a very moving email from a doctor called Julian Urban. He's a 38-year-old serving in a hospital in Lombardy, Italy, one of the hot spots of the coronavirus. And this is what he writes. Never in my darkest nightmares did I imagine that I would see and experience what has been get going on in Italy in our hospitals this past three weeks. At first a few patients came, then dozens, then hundreds. Now we are no longer doctors, but sorters who decide who should live and who should be sent home to die. Though all these patients have paid Italian health taxes throughout their lives. Until two weeks ago, my colleagues and I were atheists, he says. It was normal because we're doctors and we learn that science excludes the existence of God. I used to laugh, he says, at my parents for going to church. Then, nine days ago, a 75-year-old pastor was admitted into the hospital. He was a kind man. He had serious breathing problems. He had a Bible with him, and he impressed us by how, by how he read it to the dying as he held their hand. When he had time, we when we had time, we listened to him because we have reached the end of ourselves. We can't do it anymore. People are dying every day. We are exhausted. We have two colleagues who have died and others that have been infected. We realize we need God's help now. Uh, and so we've begun to pray whenever we have a few minutes. We were once fierce atheists, yet now we are asking the Lord to help us continue so that we can take care of the sick. Mm. Yesterday, he says, the 75 year old pastor died. He had managed, despite his condition and our difficulties, to bring us a peace that, was, that we no longer had hoped to find. The pastor went to the Lord and soon we will follow him if matters continue like this. I haven't been home for six days, writes this doctor. I don't know when I ate last. I realise my worthlessness on this earth and I want to use my last breath to help others. I'm happy, he says, to have returned to God whilst I'm surrounded by the suffering and death of my fellow men. And then he says, please, would you pray for these frontliners all over the world? It's incredibly sad so um, moving. and moving. And this is a strange land that we're in. It's terrifying. But also we see in his testimony hope that God is moving in spite of the crisis. Yeah. I think as a church, we are determined not just to survive this crisis, but really to rise up and respond with courage and faith, like that 75-year-old pastor in Lombardy and the 38-year-old doctor. Mm. These are times when I believe the church can shine. It is just wonderful to see people beginning to find faith through this crisis. Mm. We're definitely seeing more people turning to prayer. There's 
just yeah. loads at our da twice daily prayer meetings in Emmaus. 24-7's resources are just going through the roof. Mm -hmm. It's so busy, everything's yeah. being downloaded. And it's interesting because throughout history, every awakening begins with a big kind of shaking of society. Uh, you see that with John Wesley's awakening, which was in the wake of the Industrial Revolution. Or Azusa Street, which was after a great earthquake, rocked Los Angeles. We see throughout history, the church is at the forefront of caring in response to crises. In the 19th century, the Salvation Army, the YMCA, the great philanthropists like Cadbury and Roundtree, these people were responding to the poverty of post-industrialism. In the 20th century, the church has been at the forefront of uh, debt relief through the Jubilee campaign and CAP. And in the 21st century, it's the same. There was the big uh, Suzanne tsunami in 2004 in the, in the Indian Ocean that killed 300,000 people. The church was at the forefront of caring. In the 2008 Haiti earthquake that killed 200,000 Christians were caring for all the orphans. In the 2014 Ebola uh, outbreak that ravaged West Africa, it was again Christians who were visiting those in quarantine with food, water and toiletries. Yeah. And so we want to be the same as that. And that's why we've decided this is the perfect time for us as a church, not just to think about how we're going to look after each other and how we're going to do our service online, but we are going to launch a new campaign this coming week, and I'm telling you about it now, in a mayor's road called Love Your Neighbour. Mm -hmm. And um, the way it's going to work is this, and we want every one of you who's a member of Mayor's Road really to get involved. If you're saying, yes, I, I, I want to make a difference at this time. And there are four teams, and we want to invite you to join one of them, no more than one. And the four teams are these. Uh, the first is people who can give time to do practical stuff. It might be go shopping, cut the grass, uh, walk a dog for somebody, you know, who's incredibly unwell. Just practical stuff. Your yep. dad would be great at all of that. <laughs> uh, yep. um, secondly, uh, the, the, we've got a team of, of, of people who, who want to give, give professional skills. So these are people who, who are skilled, who are trained and can help in particular areas such as homeschooling. Suddenly mums and dads are desperately trying to work out how to educate their kids mm -hmm. at home. It's not easy, but we've got teachers, we've got retired teachers, we've got people who've done homeschooling in this church. Yeah. We need you to help us so we can connect you with those who are struggling right now. Uh, but it might not be that, it might be um, grief counselling. Uh, you know, that, uh, yeah. that's, I think uh, sadly that's going to be a, a, yeah. a big one. Debt counselling, again, we've got people in the church who are trained debt counsellors, but we're going to need you. But also if you've got experience in banking or uh, accountancy and you think you might be able to help uh, in, in, in that way. Uh, and so there's lots of areas where you, some people would love you to give uh, professional help. Uh, and maybe some of you uh, could even give advice to businesses that are struggling, because obviously so many are. The third team you might consider joining, so the first was practical, the second was professional. The third one is pastoral. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is really simple. A lot of people need to talk. Mm -hmm. They need, yes, a bit of advice, but they also just need a listening ear. And we need people who could man and woman uh, phone lines and mm -hmm. just be available yeah. to people uh, as like the first point of contact. Mm. And uh, so we don't want to just pastor the church and care for one another. We want to pastor our streets yeah. and our communities. The fourth team uh, mm -hmm. is those who can pray, Good. those who want to give time to pray, who can cover this whole missional response, this time of crisis in prayer because we know it is a, a spiritual battle and we know that we need God's power. That's really the secret sauce. That's what makes a difference. And so as I said earlier, I, I suspect most people, if you're healthy and well, have got time right now. And what we're asking for you is your time. You can either give time practically or, t or, or time to advise people professionally or you can give time to engage pastorally at the end of a phone and we'll train you. By the way, with all these things, we'll make sure everyone's safe. Mm. There's proper social distancing. Yeah. You know, that's about taking care of you, but also taking care of those we're trying to help. 
And then also we want to invite some people to give time to the prayer initiative. That's already going great guns yeah. in the church under Jill's leadership. And so the, the campaign is going to be called Love Your Neighbour. And we're launching it this week. Uh, if you're watching during the week, you're not watching live, it may be up online by now. And to be honest, we're going to need people to give money because it's going to cost money to go and do shops for people. It's going to cost money to sell a lot of this up. And uh, many people haven't got money right now. But if you are in a position to give, we really need that. This isn't just some pitch for some project or campaign. This is us as the people of God trying to respond to the biggest crisis in world history. Mm -hmm. So when we look back, we don't just say we kind of survived with some comforting faith, but rather we look back and said we seized the opportunity. Yeah. We made a difference when it counted in the lives of many, many other people. In Mayas Road, we are not here to build a great church. We are here to build great cities. And this is a time where our communities our neighbours, our cities need us. Let's respond together. So, um, Sammy, do you want to pray? Let's pray. Love it. Father, we just love you and we want to do our best to serve you and serve your kingdom. Lord, we don't just want to ride out surviving this season, but rather we want to do our best to be brave, help me to be brave over this next few weeks, even months, mm. and to help to build your kingdom Amen. in this love your neighbour uh, mission. Amen. Amen. OK, we're going to cut back to Josh now and Emma and the Heather household who are going to help us land all of this in a personal response, whether you're watching on your own or, you know, with your screaming kids or whatever, we're all going to respond. Remember, yeah. we may be in many homes, but we are one family. We just want to take um, a moment to respond personally, uh, initially at this time. And so um, just wanting to respond to really what Pete was saying about finding it hard to sing the Lord's song in this strange land at the moment and I feel like there's probably um, just a couple of groups of people who are just feeling this particularly tough at the moment and firstly those who are just practically finding it difficult to find time with the Lord perhaps mm. um, some of us who would normally connect with God in ways like sport or outdoors in ways that perhaps we can't connect with anymore some of us perhaps have lost our normal rhythm perhaps our time on the commute that we would normally be mm. spending time praying or or reading the bible some of us who perhaps have less time on our own than maybe we've ever had before um, but also i feel like perhaps some of us have got some big questions coming out of this around mm. what God is doing and where is he in that and um, just feeling like um, perhaps distracted by social media and the news and the headlines that are rolling out and so I would just love us to pray into this together and so if you've got the space and time in your home to do this, let's just take a couple of moments. If you feel comfortable, why don't you close your eyes? Um, and we're just going to pray for a grace. It says in the Bible that his grace is sufficient for us. And that means that his grace is enough for us to be able to manage the day in front of us, that he has equipped us mm, to cope so with the um, just the moments that are in front of yeah. us, not in three weeks' time, not in six months time mm. but today and so why don't you just close your eyes and we're going to just pray together right now mm. father we thank you that you are with us yeah. that you are um that you are always there mm. that you know and that you bring hope and peace and joy and fruit out of every situation that we are in mm. and so lord right now i pray for grace a grace on each of our homes and hearts and minds lord firstly for the the different things that we are managing whether that mm. is workloads or homeschool or um our like thought life or our mental wow. health lord that there would just be grace 
for that in the moment, that we yeah. would feel confident that you have given us the things that we need in order to get through the day. And Lord, secondly, I just pray for grace for ourselves yeah. and for our relationships, Lord, that we would just take the pressure right off of any mm. shoulda, woulda, couldas that hmm. we are putting on ourselves through this time, but that wow. we are able to just get through with just enough, that we would have grace on ourselves, grace on our relationships, grace on our communication, and that you would just bless us all with kindness and peace at this yeah. time. Amen. 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 Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Pete and Sammy. Um, the, uh, the charge from Pete, about where we're at as a church right now is exciting. As he said, this is a dangerous opportunity. And for us at Emmaus, it's always been the same thing, that we would pastor the church and that we would reach those not yet in the church. Mm. Now that has some very clear things going on with it right now with coronavirus. And um, how we reach our town is a important mandate on us. Mm. And we know from the Bible in John 3.16, that you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. And so every time we gather like this, we're going to take an offering. And we're going to do that, even though times can feel challenging, we are going to take mm. offering because we believe that this is part of our worship. Mm. It's part of our discipleship. And right now we see that there is deep darkness covering the earth. But as those who are following Jesus, we're going to take all of what we are and we're going to aim it at that darkness. We're going to aim our prayer life. We're going to aim our time and we're going to aim our money at seeing this change. In Acts, it says that the, um, the way it defined the apostles, it was like those that have turned the world upside down have come here. And you turn the world upside down when you live from a different reality. And so we're going to do that. So right now, the offering is going to be on the screen. How you do that is going to be there. Now, as the church, as we, like even just pastoring those that we've got, is we, um, we've had to move the church online and that's uh, brought new costs with it. So um, that's part of our like, new costs that we hadn't actually budgeted for. So that's going to be part of the offering. We're also aware that this is challenging times. And for some people, actually, our offering is going to be really hard to do. But for some of us, actually, maybe those challenges aren't like reaching us in the same way and maybe I just want to, as we do take offering, as we go into worship, that you would like just prayerfully consider actually is this a time when you can up your offering so that you can cover the family that can't give at the moment. But for all of us, the last one is, is that we do want to make a difference for those that are being particularly affected by coronavirus. Mm. And as you sow into the life of the church, what you're actually going to be doing is you're going to be buying shopping for people who can't do it. You're going to be helping with bills for people who can't pay them. And so right now where you're at, we're just going to take a moment of quiet to just prayerfully consider what our offering looks like in this season. So I want you to take a moment. I'm going to pray and then we're going to go into worship. And through this song, maybe you could do your offering. Yeah, God, we thank you that you are good. We thank you that you are big. And we thank you that you are a provider. And so right now, I just pray that you would start to speak to each one of us, that you start to put that amount on our hearts so we can give this morning. And we bless you, God, we thank you for this love thy neighbour, love your neighbour strategy that we've got for how we're going to make a difference mm -hmm. to Surrey at this time. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Let's worship together. Last week we finished the service with uh, this next song and I wanted to do it again. It's called Benediction and it's a simple arrangement of the ironic blessing from number six. Um, and uh, I just think it's a wonderful, timely song for us to sing. So feel free to just sit and receive this song, have it sung over you or feel free to join in as well.
give you his peace give you his peace may the Lord bless us and keep us may the Lord smile on us shine his light upon us may the Turn his face towards us Give us his peace Give us his peace Blessed we May the Lord smile on us, shine his light upon us. May the Lord lift us, turn his face towards us, give us his peace. Give us His peace Go now in peace Go now in peace Go now in peace What a beautiful song. Thank you, Pete. Um, and also just thank you for all the really nice comments coming in. Uh, we are one family in many homes, as we've been saying, and so these words coming in are just really encouraging and they help us feel like we are family. Um, but one thing we do really want to encourage you is that, as Jesus says, it is the current word of God that is said mm -hmm. over us that sustains us for this season. And so we want to, as a family, be really sensitive to what God is saying. And we also want to just compile that and document it because we really feel like as God starts to speak to us in this season, there's going to be words that are going to be given that are going to help us through it. And so one of the ways of doing that is we love you just to email them into us. Uh, if you haven't shared it this morning, we feel like God's been speaking to you, just to be sharing that. We do have um, corporate prayer, virtual corporate prayer, prayer every day. Um, so that's at 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. and you can just go to the website and find the link for that and that will be a great place to just be sharing these words and just as a team we can just be gathering them and yeah just I think it'll be really encouraging as we 
receive them now, but also as we look back in the future and be like, it was that word that was said mm. that helped us all to get through this season. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And we're also aware that perhaps some of you watching this morning um, perhaps don't normally go to church or perhaps wouldn't say that you're in a relationship with Jesus. And maybe this kind of strange land that we're in is um, just making you ask questions about um, what life is all about and is there hope in this situation and so Mm. we just want to really encourage you if you have questions in this time we would love you to contact us and one of our team would love to to chat that through with you and pray that through with you if that's what you're ready to do and so mike is putting on slido our um, email address so just drop us an email and say hey i've got some big questions i'd love to chat a bit more about who this jesus is that you keep talking about Um, and one of our team will get back to you this week Mm. Awesome. Yeah, it'd be the best decision you ever make. Now, Jackson has been with us for the whole morning. Jackson, do you just want to give us a wave? <laughs> he is. He's got his device, so he's been able to like, jump on with the kids' work. And so, yeah, just that's been awesome. Um, guys, we're going to be back here uh, 10 a.m. next Sunday, so make sure you're logged on. There is also loads and loads of virtual church life that you can join in with. If you're a youth, if you're a child, if you're a student, and if you're an adult, there's all these different things. Talked about prayer, but there's so much other stuff going on. Um, Make sure that you are connecting with your collective leader. If you're not yet in a collective, then just want to encourage you. That's going to be a place we're going to find community, encouragement, and also, I hope, some top-notch banter. If there's no banter coming out of your collective, then you need to talk to your collective leader about that. And uh, just so we need to up the ante on that. So it's been great to all be together this morning. I'm going to pray and then we're going to close. Yeah, Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this moment that we've shared. And we just pray blessing over every single person watching and every single person connected to those who are watching. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And see you online.